God, don't like introduce yourself. What's up, guys? Today's my. <laughs> What's up, guys? I am Ray. <laughs> Hello, guys. This is my mom right there, and I am her sister. <laughs> okay, hey, guys. Uh, so, so sorry about this. So, um, you know that there is official day when you actually bring your kids to work. So it's your... No, you already told that in your work. No, Wait. no, no. It was just, we were just trying out. So basically oh. there was, there was a day where you bring your kids to work. So this is a day where you bring your work to kids. So it's, uh, bring your yeah. work to kids day. Yeah. Because... So this is my... This is my uh, daughter Marta, and she will help me out in talking about diarrhea and constipation yeah. and other topics that we have today. Yeah, learn. and also about that work, I can show you. I did, um, like a, a, my mom did. Yeah, so so I printed out some yeah. uh, some some uh, kids' work for her. Yeah. She's attending kindergarten. Yeah, so that's yeah. very important. So okay, Marta. So we have to stick to the topic today. So today we're going to talk about diarrhea. Okay, yeah. about taureya. It's in Latvia. Yeah. yeah. yeah so um, before we talk about uh, diarrhea, we have to um, define a normal bowel <laughs> movement. Yeah. So what do you think, Marta? How many times a day or how many times a week it is okay to go to toilet? the big time and like I think three times exactly you're exactly right so uh, <laughs> three times a day or three times a week that's a normal bowel movement so if it's more than that that's a diarrhea if yeah. it's less than that that's constipation right okay don't snack while we are doing <laughs> okay. this okay um, so what do you Marta, uh, Marta what do you think if somebody has a uh, diarrhea um, what is the most important symptom that you should uh, look for? The most important thing to ask. Have, do you have any idea? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Now it's your turn. You have to think about that. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I will answer it right away. So the most important symptom, the single most important symptom, is uh, you're distracting me. Uh, is blood in stool so blood. you don't you don't really care if it's acute if it's chronic you don't care about that you uh, just have to know whether there's blood in there if there is blood in there so we are thinking about one bunch of diagnosis if there is no blood in there you're thinking about different bunch of diagnosis yeah. Yeah? for example if there is blood in there you are thinking about bacteria okay guys uh, it's bacteria. your turn area Yes, exactly. So you're thinking about bacteria. So you are thinking about bacterial infection, which is in the gut. So this is Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia, Campylobacter, uh, Clostridium difficile infection. So any kind of bug you can name. Yeah, but these are bacterial infections. Yeah. Uh, e. coli. There is this uh, fancy O one hundred fifty seven H seven and O one hundred four H something. So uh, enterohemorrhagic E. coli. So there's there. You're thinking about bacterial infection. Of course, uh, you can also think about IBD. Um, by the way, what is the difference between IBD and IBS, Martha? Do you know what is IBD and IBS? No. Okay. So IBD, uh, inflammatory bowel disease. This is Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And IBS is irritable bowel syndrome, which is uh, basically not a cancer, not an inflammation. It's just uh, it's just the symptoms that you're feeling, and mostly these are uh, pain predominant symptoms. So there is there is bloating and discomfort in uh, your belly, and plus there might be diarrhea or constipation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know it's diarrhea. Good, good. <laughs> so the perks, what you get when you're a kid of gastroenterologist. Okay, guys, so uh, we are returning back to the bloody diarrhea. So mm -hmm. either it's bacteria or IBD or uh, it might be a cancer as well or it might be uh, diverticulosis. It might be, um, it might be hemorrhoids as well, like plus okay, some other okay. sort, sort of non-bloody uh, non diarrhea. So... You get the idea, yeah? Uh, if you do not have blood in stool, so it's a non-bloody diarrhea, usually viral 
um, viral infections go like that. And when you think about viruses, there are two viruses. One is uh, rotavirus, and then there is norovirus. And what do you think which is the most common for adults? Yep. Uh, so for the, for the adults, this is norovirus. <laughs> and for the kids, for the kids, this is rotavirus. And this is my other kid. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, so um, as for non-bloody uh, non -bloody diarrhea, there might be a situation when you have um, food poisoning or food toxical infection, um, which is uh, preformed toxins, and usually you have Staphylococcus aureus, not the MRSA, but the Staphylococcus aureus one who is giving you this, or there is Bacillus serus and some other, some other, um, some other causes of that. Martha, stop it. It's unbearable. Um, okay, non bloody diarrhea. Of course, there you're thinking about IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. In non bloody diarrhea, you're thinking about lactose intolerance, uh, as in primary lactose intolerance, or simply your uh, genes uh, are, well, messed up, if you will. And. Um, and um, you're not able to tolerate uh, uh, milk sugar or the sugar that's in milk. Yeah? So, but the single most important symptom is blood. I know how they teach you in infectology. They want you to name, and actually, I think also in gastroenterology, if you pull out this question in exam, uh, please do learn that uh, that uh, grading into um grading uh into whether it's a secretory diarrhea or infective diarrhea and so on these all, all kinds of mechanisms but they're actually not that uh, they're actually not that helpful when you actually get to get to clinic and you actually get to your patients so uh, when you're dealing with your patients you really uh need to remember blood as a differentiating factor and then shift your thinking into two uh, different um different different side different ways yeah um okay yeah then uh, as you can see in the transcript in the word document um, i have also provided you the word document you have the number three where is acute and chronic causes of course for the acute you think about all the infection uh, meaning either it's viral either it's bacterial but these are these are infections that can cause acute uh, diarrhea and chronic ones are usually those ones which are which start slowly and then uh, slowly develop and and these are these are usually um, these are usually either IBD inflammatory bowel disease or, or the same lactose intolerance and so on then there is a specific kind of diarrhea which is steatorrhea okay now I can maybe ask you, Martha, do you know what is steatorrhea? Mm. Funny word. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what it is? Um, she does. <laughs> I think it is... Uh -huh, it's your turn now. Yeah, you can think about what is steatorrhea. Yeah, and also click the like button and subscribe. Okay, do not click the like button. Yes, <laughs> yes! <laughs> You're gonna okay. get so many subscribers. Okay, so many subscribers. Uh, yes, YouTube is teaching my kids. So, steatorrhea. Perfect. <laughs> so, steatorrhea is a special special kind of um, diarrhea, which is smelly and fat is in there. And uh, it's not nice diarrhea to have. And usually this is happening because the fat is not absorbing. And to absorb and normally digest fat, you actually need to have three things working great. One of the things is bile. You need to have bile. Therefore, you need to have a functioning well gallbladder, um, functioning bile ducts, and you need to have the bile. Uh, basically, uh, it's not okay if you have something. Up, uh, you have um, the common bile duct, for example, obstructed with stones, and there are st small stones in there, or there's tumor growing. Of course, you need the bile. To come out and be actually able to um, to, to emulgate the fat and make it in small little lobules yeah? and then you ne actually need to have a pancreas which is working and pancreas is coming uh, with the lipase and lipase is actually digesting the fat and um, after that you have um, you need to have um, healthy 
healthy small intestine of the unum, ila, mostly in unum, uh, where you actually, uh, yeah, so basically you need a surface, uh, don't, don't make noises, please, 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 um, yeah, so you need to have a normal, normal sur surface, uh, normal surface to absorb the fats, and if you have problems in either of those three places, you will have steatorrhea, uh, Diarrhea, which is whitish, which is uh, smelly, which is uh, well, basically undigested fat. And so, so think about those those three places. Speaking about uh, speaking, since we're speaking about gut today, then you should know that. Um, then you should know that one of the most common commonly found diseases, which is actually a spoiling or making the small gut bad, is celiac disease, yeah, which is not an uh, enteritis, which is an enteropathy, meaning that uh, your um, small gut is sick, so you have pathy, not uh, itis, not an inflammation there. Yeah, but uh, when you have um, any sort of either it's bacterial or whatever sorts of enteritis, you're also um, you're allowed to have uh, to have the steatorrhea there. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. When somebody has, have you ever had diarrhea? Yeah. We have a sm small patient here. So, what is the main uh, what is the main treatment option when you have um, diarrhea? What do you think? Eating healthy and also drinking water during the day. Yes, very good, very good. So basically, you need to drink plenty of water. Yes. Meaning rehydration. And also, and I have another um, solution. Okay. Going and going for a run, like a jog. Uh, probably not when you have Sporting. a diarrhea. <laughs> Sporting, it's 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 good. It's good good to do to, to do sports, but probably probably not when you already have a diarrhea. Yeah. Okay, babes, you need to actually go to the dad. Uh, so okay, so drinking plenty of water. Yeah, eating healthy. Uh, and when you have diarrhea, it's very important to actually eat something which does not contain a lot of fiber. Oh, so usually yeah. you know that fiber is very good, but, but when you are actually uh, having a diarrhea, then fiber is not that great. And especially there is a, there are a bunch of uh, usually fruits and vegetables which are rich in sugars. And uh, when something is rich in sugars, uh, then these things make you, make you blow yeah and there's such a um, diet as a low fodmaps diet yeah I have mentioned the name there you are able to find it online as well um, so the low FODMAP diet, uh, it is not okay to eat it when you have diarrhea. So basically, if somebody has a diarrhea, I would say that avoid fresh milk. You're okay to drink the, um, we have kefir, so the fermented kind of milk products, yeah. So, but the fresh, fresh milk, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, and and also uh, anything that contains a lot of sugar is is off limits. So we're keeping off those, yeah. You're of course allowed to eat rice eat um eat oh my god i'm so sorry about this this is just just a nightmare okay okay uh, stop it please yeah uh okay um yeah okay about treatments then you have to focus your attention to those kind of medications um i'm sorry i'll get rid of, rid of the kids and then, then i will continue okay